Hey there, this is Dr. Paul Fernhaber, and it is time for another Wednesday of 10 Minutes of Truth. So we're at Lincoln Disc and Nutrition here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and today I want to talk about the weight loss drug Ozempic and um, other weight loss drugs that are similar to it. So uh, right off, I'm going to say that these weight loss drugs have been linked to 162 U.S. deaths. Now think about that. 162 people that have used this drug or drugs very similar to it have died. Can you imagine um, if 162 people had died from like chiropractic care or from some, you know, nutritional supplement? I mean, that that would have um, earth-shattering effects. But you know, it, it seems like when it's a pharmaceutical, people just yawn and, and just go on with life. Um, so Ozempic is, is, is the primary uh, uh, thing in Ozempic that makes it work is called a GLP-1 or a glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. Uh, and it's referred to as... Uh, semaglutide, and it's the active ingredient in Ozempic and Wegovy, which are the two primary weight loss drugs that are, are pretty similar. Um, these have taken the, the world, and certainly the United States, by storm, and uh, a lot of people are on them, but we're having some problems with them. For example, um, about 20 million people uh, around the world are taking them annually, uh, and it was viewed as sort of a quick fix for weight loss, but with every quick fix, there's a problem, there's problems involved. And so uh, one of the problems is involved has been these 162 reported deaths. Um, so, uh, Let's just talk about what are some of the serious side effects or reactions to the drug. Um, there's there there's there's some very specific ones. First of all, um, there's suicidal ideation. Um, there were uh, it, it's been reported that um, of out of thirty. 1,527 reports for semaglutide, 107 cases of suicidal or self-injurious reactions were identified, and the association remains significant even after counting for other factors. Research has revealed a 45% increased risk of suicidal ideation in patients taking um, these uh, weight loss drugs as compared to other pharmaceuticals. And if you're on a antidepressant and you take Ozempic, um, the, there's a much higher risk of suicidal thoughts. It goes up to 150% to 300% increase uh, in this group. So if we look at uh, uh, why this happens, so one of the things that semaglutide does is it interferes with the function of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter associated with mood regulation and reward perception. And um, it's this, this interference with the dopamine pathway that actually leads to uh, the you know, differences in mood and suicidal ideation. Now, some of the other side effects associated with Ozempic are, are nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. And uh, 80 to 90% of people who take this experience these side effects, nausea, uh, diarrhea, and vomiting. Now, it, it isn't always severe, but they do experience these, and some people feel, you know, uh, they can manage this better than they can, you know, their weight. Well, um, uh, pancreatitis is another significant problem associated with. So you may have nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting, but 
over time that can lead to inflammation of the pancreas or pancreatitis, which is a very serious health concern and could be a health emergency. So um, that's another problem. A study of 16 million patients found that those taking uh, these pharmaceuticals had over nine times the risk of developing pancreatitis as compared to those with other weight loss medications. Another problem is gallbladder issues. Uh, gallbladder issues, uh, uh, these trials, clinical trials, reveal the higher rates of gallstones and gallbladder inflammation. And uh, the same study showed a fourfold increase in the risk of bowel obstruction and nearly four times the risk of gastroparesis or stomach paralysis. So these are, are serious, serious medical issues associated with these, with these drugs. Um, these medications also increase heart rate and they slow down the emptying of the stomach. Now, another side effect, uh, which is, is starting to come up more and more, is severe kidney problems. Uh, and so, um, uh, it, a lot of people are experiencing kidney disease or kidney issues with these drugs. Now, the, the uh, risk factors for that include kidney disease when you start taking it, advanced age, obesity, which is why most people take the drug anyway, and concurrent use of other medications that can affect the kidneys. Uh, so there are a lot of serious side effects that uh, are associated with Ozempic. Um, now, the author of this, uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola, the author of this article, talks about a, a uh, bacteria, normally occurring bacteria in our colon called Ackermansia, which acts like Ozempic. Uh, and people that have normal amounts of Ackermansia in their gut don't really have as many weight problems and the problems associated with that. Uh, and acromancia stimulates your body the same way that GLP-1 stimulates your body, which is the primary active ingredient in Ozempic, except that it does it differently, does it more efficiently, and it doesn't stay high all the time uh, like uh, the GLP-1 in the, in the drug. So um, the problem is, is that if you're missing or you're low in acromancia, your body is not able to, um, to naturally produce as much GLP-1 as it's supposed to be. So uh, why, what causes uh, a disruption or a lowering of acromancia in your gut to begin with? Well, um, one of the main issues is mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, the mitochondria are the parts of your cells that produce energy. So when the mitochondria are poisoned or they're not working well, that really affects the amount of acromancia uh, in your GI tract. So the next question would be, what causes mitochondrial dysfunction? Well, there's lots of things. And so uh, to give you a nice list, I, I uh, accessed this book, which I've talked about in some of my other uh, Wednesday uh, 10 Minutes of Truth, Good Energy by Casey Means. And she talks about what causes the mitochondria to, to go bad. And so I'm going to give you some, uh, some reasons. Number one is chronic overnutrition. Consuming too many calories and too much processed food. So, uh, uh, consuming too much ultra processed, industrially manufactured food impairs our body's self regulatory mechanisms and directly trigger hunger and food cravings. So, just eating too much and eating really too much of the wrong kinds of foods or what I would call food-like substances. Another thing is nutrient 
deficiencies because people eat too much highly processed food. They're, they don't get the nutrition that they need, which the mitochondria need to run on. So um, particularly selenium, magnesium, zinc, B vitamins, and coenzyme Q10. Those are the nutrients that the body, the mitochondria need that we're not getting nearly enough of in our food. Uh, the third thing is just an unhealthy microbiome or an unhealthy um, gut bacteria uh, environment. Now, uh, what causes that? So if you have a healthy, flourishing microbiome, then uh, you're going to have a lot more acromancia. So what causes an unhealthy microbiome? Well, this is called dysbiosis. And dysbiosis can be triggered by, number one, excessive refined sugar intake, uh, ultra-processed foods, uh, pesticides, medications like NACIDs, you know, which would be like Advil, antibiotics, uh, other medications that, that cause uh, mitochondrial dysfunction and dysbiosis would be antibiotics, chemotherapy drugs, statins, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, alcohol, cocaine, methamphetamines, heroin, are all um, uh, destroyers of mitochondrial function. Uh, lack of sleep, you know, burning the candle at both ends, too much alcohol, physical inactivity or, or a sedentary lifestyle, smoking, infections, and other factors. Um, another thing that she mentions, though, which I think is very interesting, is thermoneutrality. In other words, staying at, a, at the same temperature all the time. Uh, one of the things she said, which I've read before, is that when you subject your body to cold, um, that stimulates the body to generate more warmth by increasing mitochondrial activity. So we're getting into a very good time of year for that. Uh, when in, during the winter, I work out. I work out outside all winter, and I, I try and dress down so my body to keep my body cool and sometimes even cold, and that stimulates mitochondrial function. But you can do that in other ways. You can take a cold. You know, take a cold shower, you can uh, uh, go on walks in cold weather and dress down and, and uh, to where your body, you have to walk hard to stay warm. But those are some other things that you can do to stimulate mitochondrial function. So, you know, when you look at uh, the reasons that mitochondria don't function well, and then they cause this bacteria lack of the acromancy bacteria. It's the very things that people are doing uh, to gain all the weight in the first place. So my recommendation is, is not to uh, uh, use these drugs because, you know, Ozempic, because it has such serious side effects, but maybe you could go to the store at least and get uh, acromancia in the form of a probiotic. And you wanna take that on an empty stomach. Now, I'm not a huge fan of probiotics because once you start taking them, in two weeks you lose the effect. Your body goes back to normal. So in our office, we do a gut healing protocol to where we, we weed, seed, and feed. Uh, we weed out the bad bacteria, we feed the good bacteria, and we help seed um, beneficial bacteria back into the gut. So that's what we would do here. So uh, it's interesting that weight loss all comes back to gut bacteria. And the acromancia gut bacteria is the, is the most important. Uh, we don't have it here, but you'd probably get it at some health food stores here in town, like natural grocers. But what we do have here is a great gut healing protocol that can really turn your gut health around. So uh, uh, I would um, avoid Ozempic and other weight loss drugs if you can because of the side effects and deaths and try something much more natural that 
like I just talked about. So this is Dr. Paul Fernaber here in Lincoln, Nebraska on uh, November 6th, the day after the election. Um, we're at 4535 Normal Boulevard, Suite 105, and our phone number is 402-488-2220 in case you want to get in touch with us. So uh, hopefully uh, this has helped you on your weight loss journey, and we'll have another 10 Minutes of Truth next week. See you then.